ever been at the precipice of a revolution? Well, today is that day. Technology is always changing, and one-page rules have slipped themselves into the forefront. Most of our miniatures nowadays are sculpted in 3D programs, then either delivered to us as full models or STLs to print ourselves. But that always requires an artist, someone that takes time. But what if they could harness the power of AI and speed up the process and revolutionize it at the same time? No what ifs on this channel. I've got a preview of the new range of miniatures OPR will be replacing their entire line with. These models are not only bigger at 52 millimeters and crafted by a quality AI, but they've been a dream to paint for me. The details offer so much freedom to really let creativity flow in ways you've never thought possible. The first thing I noticed about these miniatures is that they really are so much simpler to prime and prepare. The supports just fell right off of them with no risk to the details, which meant taking them out of the printer was a breeze. It was like the AI sculptor was just talking to the printer, and magic happened. When it came to priming, I wasn't hunting around for unreachable angles. Everything was accessible from just a few turns of the model. I decided to prime in grey because with so much access to every part of the model, I figured there wouldn't be any hassle to covering it completely and simply, which you'll see right about... Now, I'm going to do some pretty simple colors on this adventure. Just some browns and some red and white stripes, as well as metallics wherever the metallics are, and maybe a nice dark grey beard. Unlike more primitive miniatures, the process becomes really simple, just following the lines already there to know where colors need to break. Like on the boot here, I don't have to guess where the boot stops and the pants begin, there's a perfect separation for it already. Not only that, because of the intelligent design making, it puts painters in the unique place where they can decide what material is what on the model. While before the boots were quite obviously plate metal, with this new system, I have the choice of making them metal or leather or even wood clogs, and they wouldn't look out of place at all, putting the power of the color scheme back into the painter's hands. One of the problems with washing is you never really know where the wash might settle outside of the obvious recesses. The larger AI-generated surface doesn't really have that problem, because all of its recesses are obvious, so you know exactly where it's going to settle. For this reason, I'm going to be washing some of the leathers I created with just an Arcrack Earthshade, to show how simple it can be to get a graded shade with these new miniatures. Because of the well-defined recesses, we get a very clear and separate light and dark between each of the cells. White or light prime with a contrast I'm sure would look prime as well for how effort inexpensive it would be to do so. Layering becomes really interesting and creative with this new model style in a few ways. The first way is that it can really help with setting up the boundaries for your layers. Like on the red I have for the arm clothes. With each of the faces, I know exactly what I need to fill in while leaving an outline of my undercolor along the edges where the faces end, taking all the guesswork out of when I have to stop myself to allow the shades to show through. For the other way, I want to make a few blends on the palette of a color just to prepare them. I'll be doing it on his hat for this, so thought a nice olive green blend would work well. Then all we have to do is go down the hat filling in cell by cell, each one getting a color based on the angle and location. So the highest cell gets the lightest shade, and the cells under the hat get the darkest shade. As long as I change up shades between each cell, it should give me a really nice transition in light and color. Edge highlighting is one of those things that can be really difficult for people. One thing that makes it easier is to use the side of a brush to run along the edges. But not every edge is set up for that kind of highlighting. That's no longer the case here. Every edge is perfect for edge of brush highlighting. It'll never be more simple. All it takes is finding the right color to highlight with, usually something a fair bit lighter, 
then what needs highlighting, but nothing too extreme except in those extreme highlight areas. Then filling the brush and thinning it out on the palette to make it flat, so that you have a flat edge and drag it perpendicular to the edge you're meant to highlight. They're all very obvious, so it makes it a breeze to line up right to get that super sharp edge highlight. The last thing I want to point out is one of the hardest things for people to paint and how simple these new sculpts make the process. Before it was really hard to actually get the brush to touch the eyeball to create an iris. But with these new sculpts, we're free to touch the brush anywhere in the vicinity and it'll still look good and right. So if you have a bit of a heavy hand, that's totally fine. Same goes for those who want really accurate pupils as well. As you can see, the new format of these models can just deliver top level painting with very few skills. While I've been training myself for years, newer painters will be able to get the same level in much less time thanks to these new figures. You'll be the bane of game stores, as not only will your minis be bigger, but by the nature of the superior AI sculpting, also better painted. Please subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this one, or just other fun things to do with painting miniatures. And until next time, enjoy your own painting journey.